It seems Guy Fieri has never met a burger he didn't like, and on diners, drive-ins, and dives, he's had the opportunity to try a lot of them. Not only did these burgers make it onto the show, but they were well worthy of a second bite. NorCal's Cochon Volan Barbecue Smokehouse is known mainly for its tried-and-true barbecue, so it's no surprise that the WTF burger features some barbecue, too. In fact, this burger is topped with smoked prime brisket and brined smoked pork shoulder, not to mention a crispy chipotle-scented pork cake. To make it, pork shoulder is brined in juniper and clove for three whole days before being slowly smoked for nine hours. It's piled atop a griddled burger with sautéed onions, cheddar cheese, the aforementioned ultra-tender brisket, a combo of mayo and House Carolina barbecue sauce, and house-cured maple bacon. The pork cake topping is drizzled with chipotle sauce to make this burger a surefire winner in Guy Fieri's book. Guy Fieri is agog watching the no-nonsense cook behind the firehouse burger at Lankford Grocery make the hot sauce that gives the burger its namesake heat. She starts by combining serrano, jalapeno, and habanero peppers with vinegar, garlic, onion, radish, and loads of mustard. The resulting sauce Fieri quips is so spicy it might cook raw chicken. Instead, it's going on a patty that's been basted with a cayenne-spiked butter for extra heat. The sandwich itself features American cheese and even more jalapenos, as well as classic burger toppings, onion, tomato, and pickle. Guy Fieri may get around in a red 60s convertible, but the burger he enjoys at Washington State's Ethos Bakery and Cafe is what Fieri calls a Bentley with monster truck tires. The burger begins with a homemade croissant dough laminated in-house and rolled not into the traditional crescent shape, but rather into a homemade burger bun. Baked and split, it's topped with an 8-ounce burger patty that's just marked on the grill before being finished in the oven with rosemary-infused butter. Topped with white cheddar cheese, it's not hard to see why Fieri had such high praise for this burger. Jonathan and Justin Fox are the masterminds behind Atlanta's Fox Brothers Barbecue. They get creative with the moniker Burger and applying it to a sandwich that isn't a burger at all. Here, a chopped smoked brisket sandwich stands in for the patty, but that doesn't stop Fieri from giving it high praise. We gotta hurry up and get this burger out before Rutledge eats all of the other brisket that Rutledge! The brisket for this burger is seasoned simply with salt and pepper before being smoked, quote, as low as it'll go. Topped with a sauce made with house-made ketchup, vinegar, Texas peat hot sauce, garlic, molasses, and spices, it's also dressed with a homemade pimento cheese patty and house-made jalapeno mayonnaise for creaminess and a slight kick. Layered on a toasted bun with peppered bacon, pickles, tomato, and onion, it surely has Fieri convinced in the brisket swap. He even notes that chopping the brisket helps to incorporate the fat, making it even more savory than the slow-smoked meat would be all on its own. Green chili cheeseburgers are a dime a dozen in Santa Fe, but Burt's Burger Bowl claims to be one of the originators. Sadly, the burger joint, which was founded in 1954, closed in 2015, and from the looks of the burger Fieri enjoyed, its closing is a big loss to the burger world. One customer, interviewed on Triple D, had been coming in for about 25 years just to order this burger, which appears to be as simple as it is delicious. The burger starts with a plain grilled patty, which is topped with burger topping staples, mustard, pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, and onion. The local flair comes in the form of a house-made hatch chili sauce seasoned with garlic, onion, and oregano. Guy liked the sauce so much, he was eating it with a spoon. The cooks at Burger Me in Truckee, California have married the best parts of a burger and an Italian hero to come up with the Italian stallion. A burger meets a deli sandwich, according to Fieri. The burger begins not with ground beef, but with ground bison, which the owner claims isn't just leaner, it also has a stronger beef flavor. The burger is topped with a Cabernet vinaigrette as well as sliced meats familiar to anyone accustomed to the Italian deli window pink mortadella, and flavorful Genoa salami. Provolone cheese and hot chopped peppers are the obvious finishing touches for this burger that's sure to conquer the heart of any Italian-American, including Guy Fieri. Guy describes the Mac Attack burger from the Boston Burger Company as the, quote, dictionary definition of comfort food. And it's not hard to see why. This burger is topped with house-made mac and cheese made with a blend of American cheddar and jack cheeses, and then seasoned with two more, parmesan and pecorino, along with some hot sauce. The mac is chilled overnight and then griddled to order when it's topped with even more cheddar and jack cheeses. Both crispy and gooey, it's not hard to see why one client dubbed it wicked awesome.
Hodad's in Ocean Beach, California is a surfer's paradise with a no-shirt, no-shoes, no-problem ambiance attitude and sign. The now-deceased owner, Mike Harden, may have had a laid-back demeanor and funky vibe with his restaurant, but he was serious when it came to building big burgers. The signature burger at Hodad's is unique for sure, and is topped with a boiled bacon patty cooked up so that it almost resembles hash browns. The cooks at Hodad's are burger experts and construct what they call an onion castle atop a bun spread with mayo and mustard, drizzling the ketchup all over and topping with pickles, tomato, and lettuce. The burger patty and baking concoction are the finishing touches. The space now known as Pinky's West Side Grill was once home to a Volkswagen garage and repair shop. But when the Flavortown mayor visits, the North Carolina spot is known not for lemons, but for burgers. The chef behind this spot, formerly of since-closed local fave The Penguin, griddles up a burger whose name is a nod to the now-defunct Triple G Garage. Greg tops the 80-20 beef burger with homemade beef chili seasoned with garlic, chili powder, coriander, hot sauce, and cumin. Each burger has not one, not two, but three five-ounce patties and is piled with mustard, chopped onions, cheese, and house Southern slaw. I want to see you do this. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Get after that! Fietti does not hide his love for the bacon cheeseburger at Dad's Kitchen, which, according to one patron, is truly, quote, unlike any burger I've ever had. What's so special about it? The bacon and blue cheese are cooked right into the patty. To make this crazy burger, aptly named Dad's Burger, the bacon is chopped into tiny squares. The diced bacon is then packed into a ring mold and topped with blue cheese, followed by the beef mince for the burger. Cooked on the griddle, the resulting burger has a crispy crust and is infused with bacony flavor all the way through. Served with an Aleppo pepper spread made with loads of roasted garlic and garlic-infused oil, the resulting burger is deemed both off-the-hook and righteous by Guy. And you can tell he really means it as he swoops in for another bite. Guy likes most things he tries on Triple D. In fact, aside from eggs and liver, Fietti likes most food, period. So given that his first experience with a peanut butter burger did not go all that well, it's perhaps surprising he would ever try such a concoction again. And yet, he finds himself doing just that at Sabor's International Cuisine in Utah. Here, a chef who has cooked for President Reagan now makes comfort foods from around the globe. The peanut butter burger here is admittedly quite different from Fietti's first taste of this oddity. Chef Garcia pairs the peanut butter spread with a homemade chipotle sauce, and Fietti likens it to a Thai peanut sauce, with a touch of spice lacing the sweetness. It seems to have made the spiky-haired TV host a PB burger convert, and the house-made root veggie chips seasoned with cumin and chilies don't look bad either. At New Mexico's Dr. Field Goods Kitchen, they don't just serve burgers, they butcher whole animals. And at this farm-to-table restaurant slash butcher shop, the burger isn't made with beef but with pork. Pork belly, to be exact. Yep, that's right, the whole burger here is made of bacon, for a cross between a burger and a BLT that has Fieri smitten. To make these burgers, 8 to 12 pork bellies are brought in per week and smoked on applewood. Each burger gets a whopping 9-ounce patty cooked in a wood-fired oven, served on a house-made potato bun. Topped with mayo, heirloom tomatoes, and baby greens, and served with house onion rings, it's a monster, according to Fieri. At In a Pickle Restaurant in Waltham, Massachusetts, the Toro Loco Burger is a staple, and it's not hard to see why. The burger patties are topped with a breadcrumb-coated, deep-fried hunk of pepper jack cheese. The house-made fried onion straws are coated with a powder made from ground-up fiery hot cheese snacks for a burst of both spicy flavor and bright red color. The burger is topped with arugula and two sauces, sriracha and jalapeno. The result is just spicy enough to have our diners, drive-ins, and dives host drooling and going back for more. And you know that's high praise from Mr. Fietti himself. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite burgers are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.